Hello and welcome everyone to this Warcraft replay. This is going to be the first of a best of three series from the YSL uh, tournament. In the top left we have FQQ spawning in as the red human player and his opponent is going to be I am Zhao Shishi, the blue knight of player in the bottom on the top right. So anyway, um, FQQ, one of the many human players in the YSL right now. I mean there's I believe there's Infi, there's Tho, there's Yumiko, there's um I believe that's all. I could be missing that one, but I think I am correct on that. Anyway, you might have noticed I've been cat I've been uploading quite a few videos on a regular basis, and I think that's just because I've gone myself into the HOTS alpha and I guess that's reinvigorated me in making videos, not only Warcraft 3, but um, HOTS as well. Still not sure if HOTS will make a make a home in my on my channel, but you know, you don't know until you try. Anyway, uh, Bizza 3, this map is on Twisted Meadows. Quite a few games on Twisted Meadows, it might end up being a long one, but uh, we shall see. Human vs Night Elf. When was the last time since we had this match up? I'm trying to remember here. I think it was Yumiko vs Tho when he was off racing and that didn't end up uh, going Tho's favor, so... Yeah. Mentally, um, the humans probably have the higher win rate against this kind of matchup. But anyway, Ancient of War creeping next to this Null Overseer camp. Shishi gonna go for a rather late altar of elders. Um, so yeah, Shishi can go two ways. He can go Dark Ranger way. He can go the Beastmaster way. Um, but there is the slightest chance that that it could be um, a panda. I don't know. Archer sitting next to this tavern. Uh, if QQ is expecting a tavern here, it is going to be a panda, so um, I guess of the two of the two pathways that I was really expecting to happen, uh, it was the one that I mentioned afterwards. So kind of dumb of me to think, but oh uh, well. If QQ also going rather um, interesting hero choice as well. It's going to be a goblin tinker first. I mean. Uh, it's not that weird to see an, a delayed altar of kings from the human player, but uh, going Goblin Tinker first, and this is really going to exploit the weakness of a Night Elf player, um, mainly because, well, it doesn't have great defense in the early stages because of the Ancient of War creeping. We're going to see the Pocket Factory as well as the double towers coming down for FQQ, a rather aggressive build or aggressive strategy coming in from him and thankfully Shishi did choose the panda first so he is able to provide a quite a bit of anti-siege as well it is now nighttime so the archers will be able to um, meld to the shadows second, second goblin factory has been placed down panda taking quite a bit of punishment during the process third uh, moonwell is going to be constructed moonwell is also already built are going to um, rejuvenate mana as well. Second Ancient of War, nicely um, anticipated from Yumiko, is able to just fend off, try and destroy this pocket factory, which is being made quick work of. Anyway, uh, Guard Tower, Arcane Tower is nearly, um, nearly there. The third tower was focused down by Shishi, so don't have to worry about additional threats coming in, but Ancient of War is making his way to the towers and um, Ancient of War is still pretty tanky, he will be able to soak up a lot of damage from the towers if uh, if, if necessary. Um, and yeah, if, if FQQ decides to not focus the Ancient of War, there is of course the the huge amount of damage output that the Ancient of War can put out. Third tower once again being placed down, but it will be denied. Goblin Tinker did get himself level 2. Not sure if his uh, other abilities beside Pocket Factory is very good for an, for a siege play. Uh, maybe Cluster Rockets, but that's that's a very, very huge consumption in terms of mana. And there we go with the Double Wisp going for the detonations to try and prevent any more uh, Pocket Factories from being placed down. 
Ancient of War is going to root itself next to the towers, being able to provide its fortification armor and will batter against the guard, uh, guard tower. Meanwhile, back at FQQ's base, not not producing any more footmen, um, he is going to bring over um, a lot of militia as well. This is seemingly an all-inish kind uh, type of play, uh, but he does still have his uh, peasants back at base, so he will be able to, I guess, gather some gold if this turns sour. Third tower once again being rebuilt. Um, we are going to have another Ancient of War placed down. Uh, I believe this Ancient of War should actually make his way there as well, but it is still being busy producing archers. Forward Arcane Vault has been placed down here, and I mean this Ancient of War before was able to be focused down by all the militias as well as um, all the other combat units as well. So anyway, Breath of Fire has been used. I believe that is um, his only Breath of Fire for a while. Maybe Shishi needs to invest in maybe one more Ancient of War, I think. Or otherwise he should just make more Moon Walls because uh, Moon Walls are pretty much vital during the night time, but it is about to become uh, daytime, so maybe Ancient of Wars are a better investment. Let's see how how better this Ancient of War can do. Alright, let's see what FQQ's focus is. He's trying to focus on those archers, but maybe he should try and deal with this panda himself. Hunter Soul being placed down, so we could potentially have Ancient Protectors along the way as well. Goblin Tinker is running away from the archers and panda. We do have the fa uh, pocket factory trying to make its worth. Third tower has been taken down and the fourth tower followed as well. I think Shishi did, yeah, Shishi um, was very lucky that his moonwall lasted as long as it did, but to no avail. Uh, Hunter's Wall has been completed. I would imagine uh, Ancient Predictors being placed down now. There we go, there's the first one, but we don't have as many Wisp um, as Shishi would like. And this is probably the worst time for Shishi to be fighting during the daytime because his moon walls unable to regenerate any mana and therefore unable to sustain well. Breath of Fire able to do a decent amount of damage against those footmen, but um, those women will just retreat when they're low health, and the Goblin Tinker will activate a healing scroll. Looks like the Panda did get himself the Drunken Brawler, so he's able to provide some critical sh critical hits as well as dodge a couple of hits himself. Huntress is also being trained up as well uh, for Shishi. He is just trying to deal with this huge amass of scout towers, and looks like the third third tower will be completed and fortified it will be a guard tower so um, able to hit the tree of life itself so Shishi is going to be forced to commit a couple of wisps to try and just uh, repair that tree of life ancient protector has rooted itself to try and prevent any further progression from uh, those towers defend is going to be a rather valuable asset for um, FQQ to just try and fight against all this piercing damage. Uh, we do also have a glaive thrower being tra uh, trained up for Shishi, so a lot of focus in trying to defend this. Will it work out? Who knows. Andrew Victor able to take down the progressing tower. Unfortunately we just still have a pretty good solid tower line over here for FQQ. Clockwork Goblins able to take down a couple of these Wisps, and we are going to have a, another factory being placed down. <laughs> this is, I guess you could say, kind of comical that FQQ is make, setting up shop as well as just settling down um, in this base, but uh, he will, he might actually run out of steam, but then again, the same thing could apply to the other the other player. Shishi has lost quite a bit during the siege, but he has managed to replace his moonwalls on the side. Maybe he needs to place down a couple more towers himself because um I mean 
uh, maybe he might not need additional towers. The only problem he has to worry about is the pocket factory, and he can quickly make work of that with the Breath of Fire from the Panda. I think FQQ is kind of losing steam here. Um, the fact that most of his units are rather low health and hasn't been able to creep further up um, might be a bad sign for him. Fortunately, he has the freedom to go and tick up himself. Going for the keep tick, um, Shishi staying behind a little bit. I think um, being unable to tick up is going to really hurt him in the later game. Because night elves are generally not that powerful tier 1 versus a human tier 2. But the panda able to get three back to back footmen. Another pocket factor being placed down out of range of the ancient protector as well, but the goblins will be taken down by the protector himself. So yeah, uh, more fighting going on over here, Breath of Fire only able to catch one of those units. Goblin Tinker is being focused down by the protector and the ballista, uh, no, not focusing the tinker at all. Still, um, this, these towers will eventually go down because um, those peasants will eventually be, be killed off and they don't have the uh, the area of effect damage I don't think um, but they are still getting hit by the glaives breath of fire ooh quite a bit of um, quite a lethal dagger I believe has been placed into FQQ killing uh, two of those peasants and I don't think FQQ is going to invest more peasants into this he is going to place down his sanctum he does have a blacksmith as well um, no rifleman being added, un uh, unfortunately. I think rifleman would be a very good unit to invest as well, just because um, huntresses are generally the main uh, unit focus for Shishi right now. And I mean, the only option for Shishi to go for is the double engine of lore, and that can very much be shut down by mass masses of riflemen as well. Um, level 3 Tinker and level 4 Panda. So far the hero is a little bit even I think. Um, that just goes to show you how well Shishi has been able to defend as well as just how well FQQ is able to maintain the siege for 8 minutes I believe. 8 minutes. Um, but anyway I think this is going to falter. Pocket Factory in range of the Ancient Protector. Um, won't be able to produce as many Cockroach Goblins as he would have liked. Still upgrading Guard Towers in front of Shishi's base. I'm pretty sure that's just a little bit of wasted resources. Um, and very much could have been invested somewhere else. Maybe um, a Rifleman, but I don't think we have any Rifleman just yet. FQQ is still tunneling on um, the towers here, and I don't think that is a smart enough option. I mean, the fact of the matter is, Shishi is still tier 1, and I think FQQ just needs to back off and capitalize off of this. I don't believe in the concept of um, maintaining pressure, because um, this could easily backfire, I think. Goblin Tank is not necessarily the best of heroes in the later stages of the game either. As you can see right there, how much damage did the panda just put out with his level 2 breath of fire? That's a lot of damage. And FQQ is going to run away with his tail between his legs. Level 5 on the panda, that's not something you would like to see because the panda is an absolutely incredible hero at level 5 and onwards because level 3 Breath of Fire is just too powerful to I guess withstand. Mortal teams being added to the mix, I'm not sure about this. The fact that there are no spellbreakers in the mix, nor do we have any um, riflemen, 
I really think that FQQ kind of lost his his control of the map now, and he can only defend with one mortar team, two mortar teams, and a priest versus five, six huntresses as well as a level five panda. Of course, the mortar teams will be able to pick off these huntresses if they manage to hit their uh, targets, but other than that, I mean, Shishi has the luxury of just of just picking off these units as they come out. Although that was a pretty good hit on those huntresses. Uh, Pocket Factory placed down earlier was able to just deal a little bit of damage against these against this building. Of course, the goblins will be able to time out and of course self-destruct, dealing additional uh, siege damage to this building. And that's pretty much it. Nicely done. D another factory will be able to take care of the whole um, if he goes for it. Panda going for a breath of fire on the gold line. Um, severing, I guess, the economy of FQQ for a little while, but he is producing more peasants. So we'll be able to replenish that number eventually, but yeah. Shishi does not look like he requires um, additional tech. All he needs is the brute force of his Huntress numbers. Once again, Panda being an absolutely annoying um, thorn in FQQ's sight. We'll be able to kill more peasants and just run away. Literally just a hit and run strat. Um, one factory, uh, additional factory able to take down the uh, Hunter's Hall and it does look like the Altar of Elders is next. Ancient of Wonders being uh, replaced here. I think Shishi has enough Huntresses so far to not worry about reproducing, but if he loses his Huntresses, um, that might be a completely different story. Park Factor was be able to be destroyed, so the Altar of Elders is able to be saved. <clears throat> Wisp over here in position for a potential expand. I don't think that will be happening. Um, another park factory has been placed down. Probably not the best location to place it because um, the Huntresses will make quick work out of it. Are we going to have a replacement on the hole? I don't think so. We are going to have an expand at the bottom actually. So Shishi, um, I mean, it's pretty much fine for him to go later in the in the game because his panda will just continue to scale well and storm earth and fire is way better than whatever the tinker has to offer um, I don't know I don't know the name of it but he transforms into a siege machine and I mean it's, it's nothing compared to storm earth and, F earth and fire that I know for a fact breath of fire on the goblin tinker he is running away for his dear life um, Another Breath of Fire is available if it is required. Yeah, there we go. That is pretty much the kill on the Tinker. And Shishi is going to move in with the attack. No Tinker to defend whatsoever. FQQ is forced to GG. And yeah, that's... That's a really unfortunate loss for FQQ. Because he literally had um, control of the map. But I think he overcommitted a little too much. And just lost the game. Anyway, hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I'll see you guys in game two uh, of this best of three.